Well, a Biden administration source telling Fox News President Biden is considering executive action to limit illegal migrants' asylum claims. Several plans are being looked at with no specific date on when they would be implemented. But Axios is reporting this executive order could happen just two weeks before Biden's State of the Union address to allow him to say, quote, he took action while Republicans just talk during a speech. Uh, let's bring in former federal prosecutor, former acting ICE director, former DHS Deputy Assistant Secretary Jonathan Fahey. Jonathan, good morning. Good morning. Seems to me that the president's got a little bit of a conundrum here, because if he comes out and, and pushes through an executive order, he can go on the State of the Union. He can tell, you know, tell America, look what I've done. At the same time, though, he negates what he said earlier, which is that we needed Congress. He, he didn't have any power at the border. That's why Congress needed to pass the border bill. So he's kind of stuck on both sides. What do you say? Yeah, it really is. He really isn't a trick bag here. But but you got to remember, everything that's come out of this administration has either been utter nonsense or, or totally false with respect to immigration. They created this issue, and he's going to go in, in, to Congress and the State of the Union and, and do this, play this game like he's the one supporting law enforcement. He wants to do something about this. But everyone that pays attention to this issue knows exactly what's been going on. They invited this. Remember in the 2020 campaign when all the Democratic candidates raised their hands and said, people that are here illegally get to stay. And that's the policy of this administration. They want as many people to come to the country, and they're going to do nothing to deport them. And speaking of phones, they earlier, they get a free phone when they get here. They do everything they can to incentivize illegal immigration. It's a total game that they're playing. If they want to take this seriously, they should start deporting criminals. They won't even do that. They should, they should defund sanctuary cities. They won't even say anything about that. It's utter nonsense. I hope the media and the American people see right through this, and anyone that's paying attention will We'll see this is a total sham and a total game. Well, here's what I think the problem is, is he can come out and say that he's done this executive order. He's going to hope that we all have short-term memories, which, you know, which the fact is we're going to call him out on. And if he does do the EO because he said he was powerless, oh, oops, now I can do an EO. But on the other side of this is the fact that they, they may not enforce it. He could come out and put down the executive order and say, okay, we're going to clamp down on asylum claims at the southern border. But then he could somehow not enforce it or make sure that ICE doesn't enforce it, enforce that. I mean, I'm just, I'm looking kind of further ahead here, but that's what I foresee happening. He's just trying to save himself politically. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. They haven't been for enforcing the current laws, so this idea that they would enforce this, and the only way they'll enforce it would be at the short term. Your point is political. So, Whatever they're going to do is just going to be between now and November. And after November, we are back on to game on, open borders, no enforcement, undermine law enforcement at all costs, drugs coming across, human trafficking. And all they're going to push at that point is amnesty. So whatever they do is going to be short term designed to trick the American people to vote for him. But the Democratic position is very clear on this issue. They want open borders, and that's what they've done for three years, and they're not going to stop, and it's going to get even worse because there's not going to be an election coming up for, for Joe Biden if he, if he wins, unless he finds a way to run again in 2028 as an 86-year-old seeking a third term. But, but the reality is it's a game that they're playing, and I hope the American people don't fall for this game. All right, Jonathan, let's stay with politically motivated issues. Former President Trump asking New York Judge Arthur Engoron to delay enforcing his nearly $355 million civil fraud trial fine for a month. Trump's attorneys wrote to the judge yesterday, so they're accusing uh, New York Attorney General Letitia James of a, quote, unseemly rush to enforce the fine. They've got a point, I think, here. James says earlier, she said earlier in the week that she's prepared to seize his assets as if unable to pay in 30 days. There are several buildings, in particular 40 Wall Street, that she seems to have her eye on. Uh, Jonathan, your reaction to that? Yeah, this request is inherently reasonable, and I think this is an opportunity for the judge 
to regain some credibility in this case, because this case has done so much damage to New York, to the criminal justice system, and asking for a few more days to, to come up with $355 million seems, or a few more months or whatever it is, seems inherently reasonable. But Letitia James, you know, her statement yesterday, it's so amazing, ironic, and just really awful when you think about it, that she makes it, this whole case is supposedly about lying, and every statement she says about this case is either false or misleading. She said that she didn't campaign on getting Donald Trump. She, she said in her statement yesterday, I, I believe, that if the average New Yorker went to a bank and lied, the government would be all over them, which isn't true at all. They should have some examples of somebody that borrowed money, paid it back, had a bank that was quite happy with them, and they got prosecuted or got sued by the state anyway. They don't have a single one. So everything she says, and again, it's so ironic about a case about lying, is that it's, that it's she says false statements. The rules apply to everyone. And in fact, they, these are new rules designed solely to get Donald Trump. This case is an utter disgrace. I hope the judge will show a little dis, little discretion here and allow more time. I really do think, you know, they, they have a major problem with their judicial system. And the, the people that really are, suffer here, it's not Donald Trump, it's, it's not Letitia James, it's the citizens of New York when they have a crumbling city and their judicial system's more concerned with getting political opponents and solving the yeah. major problems occurring in the city and in the state. Well, let me ask you that real quick about, because, uh, you know, Governor Kathy Hochul comes out right after this verdict uh, and, and talks about business in New York and saying, you know, that this is this in no way should deter any, anybody from investing in New York, because the instant criticism was from the business community, and by the way, who most of them have already fled New York City for Florida, was why would I do business in New York? Kevin O'Leary, same thing. So why would I do business in New York if this is the kind of, if they're going to penalize someone like Donald Trump, you know, in, on a real estate deal where, look, this happens a lot. And valuations of New York real estate, I can tell you, can be very very, very fluid. And, and there's, there's no right or wrong when it comes to valuing a piece of real estate in New York City. There is no right and wrong because there is no playbook on this. Yeah, it's, you're exactly right. And Governor Hochul's statement kind of gives up the game here, if you think about it, because it's like, Oh, no one else has to worry. This was just for Donald Trump, but we're not targeting Donald Trump. I mean, the whole thing makes no sense. It's utter nonsense. But the fact of the matter is business people want predictability. And if you see, you can get in the crosshairs of some rogue prosecutor or some rogue state agency that will give your company the, the death penalty if they don't like your politics is very scary for anyone. And even people that don't like Donald Trump still don't like this because there's something inherently awful about this about targeting people yeah. if if you don't like his politics vote against him but don't don't try to crush his business and he's done a lot more for New York City if you think about it, than Letitia James or a lot of these other people right well Lee Carter jump in here so four and five voters say that they think there is a two-tier system of justice they believe that this is all completely unfair they believe that the system is rigged they believe all of that and I think the more the lawsuits there are actually the more that people are likely to believe this I mean how do you think anyone has faith in the judicial system and then a lot of people are saying that Donald Trump's gonna come in and, and, and if he does win again that he's gonna that he's gonna you know have retribution he's gonna go after all kinds of folks and how do you react to that well, the first thing is, I don't know how you get around the loss of confidence in the judicial system, because all of these cases, when you saw that circus in Atlanta last week, and all of these things, the, the credibility of the justice system, which used to be quite high, and I think most people really did believe politics stopped at the courthouse door, but I don't think that anymore. And I think this is going to be a long road to restore the credibility, because it's been so damaged. So these people that want to take out Trump, they really should look at the big picture, because they are hurting everyone in the process. And, you know, I really do think, you know, Donald Trump, this idea of retribution, he said it in his interviews, his retribution is doing what's right for the American people, making making the country great. That's what he's seeking to do. And people try to accuse him of doing what his opponents have actually done, because when he was in office, he didn't do that. He wasn't locking up political opponents. He didn't try to prosecute Hillary Clinton. So, you know, people want to say, oh, he'll do bad things when he gets in, but he didn't do them before. So what, where's the evidence of that? But 
yeah. but but I do think your initial point is the best point. The overall system, the criminal justice system, the justice system as a whole, have all suffered because of these actions. And you know, how do you repair it? I don't know. Yeah, Jonathan Fahey, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Great points. Appreciate it.